Hello everybody. Welcome to my next session on Android Framework Components. Today we will see a few differences between Android terminologies. These are very quite simple, but yes, it's very important to exactly know what they mean. So let's get started. Uh, we'll begin with uh, understanding uh, what is the difference between the user engineering as well as user debug builds. Uh, we use these terms very often. I'm working on user build. I'm working on engineering build. Hey, I'm working on user debug build. But what exactly this means? Come, let's go ahead and see. Uh, so first we'll see what is engineering build. Engineering build comes with default root access. Uh, this is basically used by developers if they want to uh, try any code when they develop the code if they want to try they need not uh, follow the extra steps of signing that particular code and then installing on the user build then and there itself they can test their code and that's why they use engineering build because it has root access that means uh, he the user okay he has the permission to access any system resources any file system he can access without any extra uh, permissions to be granted. That's the reason um, basically developers, everyone will use engineering build uh, because it's easy to test their changes then and there. Only when they feel, yes, my code is working fine, they will um, sign that particular changes and they will uh, put it to the user build. So user build is the one flashed on production phones. Uh, the normal personal phones, whichever we use, right? There are multiple uh, brands and there are different OEM manufacturers. All of them release their products in the form of user build. Here we don't have root access because we are not developing anything. We are just using certain features provided by the company manufacturers. So user build uh, is the one flashed on production phones. And sometimes when there is an issue, we need to debug that particular issue. For that, we need extra logging capabilities. Debug logs has to be added for us to understand the control flow of the code, right? In that cases, we actually use user debug build. User debug build by default, it will not come with root access, but yes, it can be rooted. Root access can be given so that we can access the uh, Android system resources, right? Uh, and uh, user debug, as I already told, it comes with extra logging, which helps the developers to debug the particular issue. So anything, any new feature the developer uh, tries, he basically tries on engineering build. For example, a few system properties, ADB, uh, get prop, set prop. We can set few system properties. We can query few system properties via ADB shell. All those will be done with engineering build. So once the uh, developer gets confirmation, yes, my code is working fine, he will go ahead and and put it in the user build. So this is the main uh, difference between engineering user as well as user debug. So we as a third party users, we always use only user build. So all the developers will basically use engineering or user debug builds for their work. So let's move on. Next we'll see what's the difference between release APK as well as uh, debug APK. Um, again, it's similar like the previous uh, topic, whatever we discussed. Debug APK will be signed with the default debug signing keys and uh, with default uh, flag enabled. Whereas a uh, release uh, APK, you will have to explicitly go ahead and sign that particular APK before releasing it to the customer. So when I am uh, working on a particular application as a developer, I develop a debug APK because I need not go ahead and sign with some platform keys or my product keys. I need not go ahead and sign because I'm just writing it uh, for the testing purpose. And I have the extra uh, debugging capabilities, uh, debugging um, logs added with this debug flag enabled because I need to um, solve all my errors and make my code error free and it's working fine. I should ensure it's working fine. For that, I use debug APK only when I get confirmation. Oh, yes, this is working fine. I will go ahead and make it as a release APK. 
बी श्योर मेक श्योर डी बग एपीके के नॉट बी डायरेक्टली गिवन टू द कस्टमर ओके बिकॉज दिस डी बग एपीके वी कैन डायरेक्टली इंस्टॉल ऑन इंजीनियरिंग बिल्ड एंड नो स्पेसिफिक साइनिंग कीज आर रिक्वायर्ड योर बट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू रिलीज that to the customer i will release it as a release apk here what i have to do i have to sign this debug apk with a uh, production keys or the product keys or platform keys because this apk should work on customer device so whichever uh, keys or certificates customer is using with that particular keys i have to sign my debug apk so it will function well on that particular device and in release apk obviously debug flag uh, will not be enabled because the end user is just using it he is not uh, debugging it right so uh, debug flags will not be enabled so if we have engineering build or user debug build it's easy for me to uh, directly use the debug apk on those particular builds without any extra uh, steps like i have to sign it with that product key i can check this apk on any device okay whereas on release I, uh, release apk i have to test it only on those particular products with which i have signed it so that's the major difference basically this will uh, debug apk will be used by developers and uh, this uh, whatever we release to the customers or uh, whatever oems release that will be release apk um next we'll see the difference between system prevap as well as system app so we all know uh, the important uh, information about the android system is placed inside this system partition the resources the apks the file systems everything under the system partition we can see prevap as well as app so what is the exact difference between these so app will ha app folder have the same permission as prevap because it's under the system partition so that we will be seeing system app so if an app is placed under system app partition the apps will be just like any other third party applications so unless you sign with your original equipment manufacturer that is unless you have your company signature it's like just a third party application and these apps whichever are placed under system app it will not have any special permission special permissions in the case like to access wifi to access internet or to access bluetooth or read or write external storage these special permissions will not be granted if i don't sign it with my oem keys whereas if i place any app in system prevap partition signature and system permissions will automatically be granted to these uh, app applications and it will be whitelisted in the uh, permissions folder so that's the major difference if i place any app inside the system app partition i have to sign it with my oem whereas if i just place an app inside this prevap partition permissions system permissions are granted by default system permissions as i already mentioned permission to read or write external storage or to uh, enable the wifi enable the internet access such permissions so that's the major difference between system app as well as system prevap folder uh next we'll see one more difference so if an app is needed to work for a device but it does not hold any sensitive permission then it can be placed in system app partition so if my application is not having any sensitive information i can go ahead and place it in my system app partition but if my app is holding some sensitive permissions which are very important to be taken care because if not taken care if it is ignored it may destroy the um files in the android system okay it may th lead to uncondi different uh, uh, unfavorable conditions okay that time we will place it in system prevap folder uh next one more difference is uh, as i already told uh, whatever i place inside i mean whatever app i place inside system app partition should be oem signed whereas uh, if i place any app inside system prevap it need not be oem signed so these were the major differences i want you all to be aware of when it comes to system app as well as system prevap 
so i hope this session was helpful this was very simple session but it's very important to know the terminologies and the differences between these like when this will be used what is the importance of that so that's why uh, uh so with that uh, we'll come to end of today's session and uh, today's question is uh, is oem signature needed for apps under system prevap folder oem is original equipment manufacturer as i already informed you all uh, whatever apps we place inside the prevap folder they need not have uh, special permissions android system will grant these permissions to all of them by default so the answer is no so we'll wind up today's session and uh, uh, this was very simple session but uh, yeah it's very important to know the differences between these terminologies whatever i covered up because we'll be using this in our day to day life very often uh, first we saw what is the difference between user engineering user debug build who will exactly use this and when it will be used then we saw the difference between debug as well as release apk then later we saw uh, how the app differs if it is placed in system app folder and system prevap folder so i hope you all enjoyed this session please stay tuned with my upcoming sessions i'll see you all in my next session until then everyone take care bye bye